uh, respected uh, faculties, dear participants, assalamu alaikum. Uh, this month is the symptomology. We start from syncope, then palpitation, weightlessness, today, chest pain. I think uh, Professor Dr. Mohan Johnson is the best person to talk about the chest pain. He dealt with the chest pain last three decades, I think, sir. Three decades. Yes. Sir, uh, welcome in our session, sir. Uh, Professor Badu, sir, please a uh, few comments and let's start, sir. Badu, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody, and assalamu alaikum. And why do we talk about chest pain? Of course, with the cardiologist to, to ask the patient. that whether it is actually due to cardiac cause or non-cardiac. And as Mohsin was saying, the person who has been dealing with chest pain for the last three decades, Professor Mohamed Jaman, one of the pioneers in intervention in this country, coronary intervention, uh, he's the very most appropriate person to talk about it. I hope uh, we'll enjoy the, uh, his discussion and I'm also hoping that we'll have lots of questions to discuss about it. Mr. Jim, sir, the audience is ready for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vadud. Uh, uh, really, it's my privilege and honored to be part of this uh, webinar classroom. As, a, as it is really I appreciate uh, Wadud and um, Bosin to give me this opportunity. Uh, I personally, although uh, now converted into intervention, but the basic is the clinical cardiology and the chest pain is the uh, most important part of this. Uh, just a few words about this webinar. Uh, actually, for the students, uh, the COVID has learned us a lot. And they, this is a real opportunity for the students uh, to the students, they are getting maximum benefit of uh, COVID period academic uh, activities. Almost every alternate uh, day there is some webinar and I think the students are getting maximum benefit. Definitely uh, on the other doctors who are interested, they get enjoy uh, this program and I personally learned a lot from this. Uh, my talk is uh, the chest pain evaluation, uh, the facts and thoughts. Uh, let's see, if somebody complains of uh, chest pain as a presenting symptom of any sickness, uh, everybody thinks first it is, a, it is cardiac until otherwise proved, irrespective of age, gender, educational qualification, including doctors. Uh, there are hundreds of causes of chest pain and it's not possible to talk detail of each cases in these 30 to 40 minutes. So. I will concentrate mostly the cardiac cause of chest pain and also overview some of the life threatening etiology and little management of non cardiac chest pain uh, that needs immediate attention. Uh, if somebody says the chest pain, how they describe it? Basically, chest pain is an unpleasant sensation localized to part of the body, universally understood as a disease signal and is the most common symptom that brings the attention of a patient to a physician. As you know, the chest pain has got uh, 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 primarily two aspects we deal with. One is because of the tissue destructive effect leading to some form of somatic type of sensation like stabbing, burning, tearing, squeezing, or it can be some sort of combination of emotional reaction like terrifying, nauseating, sinking, impending death. So varieties of symptoms. Uh, so chest pain are both the sensation and emotion accompanied by anxiety and the urge for immediate escape uh, to get rid of this sensation. There is a wide spectrum of the disease that causes chest pain, maybe as simple as self-limiting musculoskeletal pain in one end, to a fatal life-threatening situation like acute coronary syndrome or pulmonary embolism on the other hand. Among chest pain of cardiac origin, there is a wide range of clinical spectrum uh, as simple as the short lip angina lasts for two, three minutes because of little muscle damage to a massive myocardial infarction where even sometimes sudden cardiac death 
but there is no chance for muscle damage. So there is a wide variation in the spectrum of disease of chest pain. And if you see the real world scenario, chest pain is one of the most common complaint of the patient presenting in emergency department and account of up to 20% of patient in emergency with chest pain. And among them, about 5.5% patient really life threatened and need immediate attention. In the USA, the patient present in the emergency department, 60% get admitted and 40% are discharged. Little bit different in UK, where 30% are admitted and 70% are discharged because of various reasons. But interestingly, about 60 to 65% of patients eventually diagnosed as a non-cardiac. And it is also estimated that about 2 to 5% of the patient presenting in, with acute coronary syndrome in emergency department are misdiagnosed and discharged. And this is one of the most common cause of litigation against the emergency physician. Sir, sir, so, sound take two, sir. Uh, is, it, is it audible? Sir, yes, sir. It is audible, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so my objective in, in, in um, discussing the chest pain is to rapid and accurate assessment of acute chest pain of cardiac or non-cardiac, whatever the reason. Uh, secondly, to understand and initiate the basic initial therapy for the patient with acute chest pain. And also keep in mind that to minimize the cost and unnecessary hospitalization or some unnecessary test, especially in low risk uh, 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 etiology. So the chest pain, if uh, the common question been asked by the, uh, by the examiner to examine uh, the causes of chest pain. And it is not possible to, uh, uh, on, on that biomet board, it's, it's very difficult to uh, answer uh, a good number of etiology because of uh, the stress, anxiety. And your examiner uh, always think about if the student will not say this, then he will always say next, next, what else, what else. So to remember all these things, if you can, separate in and segregate in a different headline, then it is easy to remember and can answer a good number of uh, causes, causes of your chest pain, like uh, can be cardiac, can be non-cardiac. Uh, in cardiac, that can be ischemic or non-ischemic. If ischemia, it can be chronic stable angina, acute coronary syndrome in the form of unstable angina, non-STMI or STMI. Among non-ischemic could be aortic dissection, aortic aneurysm, pericarditis, mitral valve prolapse, etc. Among non-cardiac chest pain, similarly, if you organ-specific identify the etiology, if you consider about the pulmonary cause, like bronchospasm, trachitis, pleuritis, pneumonia, pulmonary infraction, tension in motorax, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, all related to lung. Something related to the gastrointestinal, like peptic ulcer disease, esophageal reflux, spasial spasm, sometimes biliary colic, pancreatitis. And if you consider about musculoskeletal, they could be because of costochondritis, sometimes refracture fracture, or maybe chest wall injury, that can also cause a uh, somatic type of chest pain. The other rare causes like herpes zoster, thoracic inlet, uh, outlet of, of syndrome, prolapse discs, with a spinal nerve compression, as a, like radiculopathy, splenic infarct, and fibromyalgia. There's a, another group of patient present with chest pain. And all of above, if nothing has been found, we can say it's a panic attack or anxiety disorder. But one should not miss the diagnosis of at least four ischemic heart disease in the form of stable angina, Unstable angina, non STMI or micro infarction, pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, aortic dissection. Because these are fairly common, I should not say uncommon, fairly common, and it is life threatening and needs immediate attention. Otherwise, there will be a chance of losing the patient. So, one should not miss these four. 
regarding the chest pain, uh, if you consider uh, a different category, a uh, different character, different questionnaire related to chest pain, uh, then the, one can identify the, uh, the probable diagnosis, whether it is cardiac or it is non-cardiac, whether it's cardiac, if it's ischemic or non-ischemic. If you consider it's like a location, ischemic heart disease patient location usually central diffuse, usually radiate to jaw, neck, shoulder, inner side of the arm, even back. And it's character like tightness, squeezing, choking, and usually precipitated by exhaustion or emotional or exposure to cold. And it's usually relieved by rest or sublingual GTN. May be associated with some other cardiac symptom like palpitation, breathlessness. These are all ischemic. Contrary to that, if you consider the non-ischemic, non-cardiac, if location usually it's peripheral or localized, you can pinpoint or identify exactly what is the pain. Usually don't radiate other than say colicky pain of gallbladder, usually referred to uh, shoulder. And its character is somatic type, like stabbing, uh, like sharp pain, catching pain. And usually it, it is a spontaneous, not uh, related with exhaustion, uh, may be provoked by posture, position, respiration, palpitation. And usually it is not relieved by GTN, a sublingual GTN. Maybe it will sometime in gastric pain, we can relieve by uh, antacid or any PPI. So it's a, uh, identify the ischemic pain, it's the balance of evidence, uh, uh, considering the uh, few points related to chest pain, one can identify it clearly. Sometimes there is not that easy because patient may not explain that, that typically. So there are certain uh, probabilities scoring made by many people like Diabon Forster analyzed three basic symptoms like substernal, exertional, relief with rest. These three, if one is usually non-anginal chest pain, if two, atypical chest pain, if three, typical. This is not always true. But this is one of the way you can identify the probabilities of uh, um, um, chest pain because of uh, coronary artery disease. So typically, angina is like retrosternal and diffuse, not localized, worsened by activities, emotion, cold, relieved by rest, and sublingual GTN. It radiates to arm, lower jaw, back and has a duration more than a minute as opposed to second or hours for some other non-ischemic cardiac pain. But ironically, the diabetic patient may not uh, uh, always give this typical symptom. And, and many a time you can find by expression of the patient uh, with the anxious looking, with a sweating, crushing type of pain, difficulty in breathing, pale or this is a typical acute heart attack symptom. Many a time patient instead of saying anything, expressing so many things by ex extending, uh, express, uh, outstretching his arm, uh, hand over the middle of the chest. And uh, this very pathognomonic sign is called Levin sign. That is almost certain that it is of cardiac origin. So these are the way you can identify is the cardiac or non-cardiac. Apart from that, if you consider this a cardiac, you should also inquire about some of the Symptom related to coronary disease like palpitation, dizziness, syncope, weakness, fatigue, dyspnea, PND, sweating, or vomiting. If one or more than this symptom can be associated with chest pain, that is more in favor, it is a probably ischemic heart disease. And also, you can inquire about the risk factor related to ischemic heart disease like hypertension, cholesterol high cholesterol, smoking, diabetic habit, uh, diabetes mellitus, family history of coronary disease, obesity, physical inactivity. So all together, if you compile, then it will be easy to understand from the history, associate symptom and risk factor. So you can come to a conclusion, the probabilities of this pain is because of ischemic. Sometime, in especially in emergency department, as I said earlier, this is a gray zone. The pain is not typical an emergency doctor is not really uh, confident whether he need to get admission to the patient or he need to discharge the patient. So there is some scoring system. One of this is the emergency department assessment of chest pain score, EDACS. 
and, and along with ECG and troponin, all together, if this score is less than 16, it is low risk. If it is more than 16, it is not low risk. Term is not low risk, means that it, it, you, you cannot send the patient home. You need to further investigate to identify the cause of pain. Similarly, there is another score system like heart score. They also include uh, some uh, uh, criteria like age, history, risk factor, ECG, troponin. So all together, 10 point. If anybody having less than three, it is a low risk. If it is four to six, it is intermediate. If it is high, like seven to 10, it is very high risk. So low risk patient with troponin negative, you can discharge the patient. Intermediate risk, you can observe and if it is more than seven, you definitely need to admit the patient for management of acute chest pain. Conventionally, we also use some chest pain protocol like similar a nine point. If it is more than a four, there is a high probability of the patient to have coronary artery disease and need hospitalization. Although it is very highly sensitive, but it has got very low uh, specificity about the it the uh, identification of chest pain. Once you identify the chest pain having all these things, you need further investigation to confirm the diagnosis apart from ECG and biochemical tests like troponin I, like extra chest, echocardiography, ETT, ultrasonogram, CT NGO or NGO to confirm the diagnosis. Stepwise, not that straight way you will go for angiogram. Stepwise, you can go for this test to identify whether this is the best pain of cardiac origin or non-cardiac. So initial assessment with the history, physical examination, 12 bed ECG, cardiac biomarker, the chest pain will fall one of the four category. Either it is chronic stable angina or possible acute coronary syndrome or definite acute coronary syndrome or it is non-cardiac. So after this initial assessment, if the patient have suspected coronary artery disease, acute coronary syndrome with low or intermediate probabilities with normal ECG and normal biomarker, stress test can be an option even in the emergency department or chest pain clinic, or it can be as an outpatient fashion as a low risk patient and, and it is a class one indication. Similarly, the suspected acute coronary syndrome patient with low or intermediate patient pro with probabilities of coronary artery disease who has got normal ECG, negative biomarker, can straight away go for CT angiogram. It's a an reasonable alternate to stress. And it is class one, recently it is class one indication to rule out coronary artery disease because it has got very high negative predictive values, almost 100%. So if somebody has got negative, means normal coronary in CT scan, CT angio, that means he don't have any coronary atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, obstructive coronary artery disease. So after these things, one should also side by side uh, think about the management part of this. They're all critically ill patient in emergency department should be evaluated, ensuring the airways, breathing, circulation, or whether it's intact or in disturbed. After resuscitation, if necessary, an IV access can be given, the oxygen supplementation if necessary, all telemetry monitoring, for saturation, for ECG can be done. And all patients with chest pain should have ECG and troponin I in emergency department. And initial management should be directed towards identification of etiology of chest pain. So now if you consider about uh, this, there is a um, acute coronary syndrome, uh, like uh, it's referred as any constellation of clinical syndrome that are compatible with acute myocardial infarction. I want to show a small uh, animation of this uh, for I share this. Like, are you seeing this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. So th this is a this is the animated uh, of atherosclerotic process. It continues for a decades to grow a subintimal 
atherosclerotic plaque slowly build up uh, below the endothelium. And once it encodes about 70% of the lumen, then the patient will present at the chronic stable angina. He will not have any acute situation. He will present only if he increase the demand by exercise or exhaustion, then it will be imbalance between supply and demand and the patient will feel chest heaviness, discomfort, even chest pain. So if this process progress further and if there is any acute changes in the endothelium with cracking or plaque rupture, there is expose of subendothelial connective tissue with a broad form element and plasma. That actually initiate the coagulation cascade and initiate the formation of clot. This clot not always completely occlude the lumen. So initial stage, there will be a period of unstable angina where there is no muscle damage. And slowly, if the clot nearly subtotally occluding the vessel, then there, there will be the damage of the muscle and may patient may present with uh, non-STMI with enzyme rise. And if this progress further, then there will be complete occlusion. So it will produce ST elevated MI, what we call acute myocardial infraction. So with this, you can also imagine the pathophysiological background of treatment. Like unstable angina, there is a fresh clot not completely occluding the lumen. Usually patient present with a chest pain prolonged more than 20 minutes or new onset of angina, class three, four, or crescendo angina has got previous angina, stable angina, now become increasing its frequency, its duration, and also its, uh, um, uh, its um, frequency, duration, and uh, its uh, threshold. So, uh, as you know, this is a common chart. Everybody might have seen it. The acute coronary syndrome, do a ECG. If it is ST elevation, accompanied with the positive uh, um, biomarker, this is ST elevated MI. If no ST elevation with positive biomarker, it is non-ST elevated MI. And if there is no ST elevation and no biomarker, and raise, it is unstable angina. So, once the patient is diagnosed as unstable angina or non-STMI, patient should be admitted in the hospital with initiation of treatment like uh, loading of dual antiplatelet aspirin and clopidogrel. Anticoagulant is essential because here I have shown pathophysiology says it is the initiation of the clot. If you give anti-clotting, antiplatelet, there will be halting of the progression of the uh, 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 progression of the um, uh, clot towards complete occlusion. You're going to add also GTN, beta blocker, statin. Nowadays it says it the high dose of statin. If patient have chest pain, then you can give morphine and, and oxygen if there is any hypoxia. Uh, I want to deliberately I have given this picture to everybody, especially for fellows and all others. This is a typical feature of acute extensive anterior myocardial infarction, where there is high, sky high ST elevation. This is important in a sense. This type of ECG is a precursor of malignant arrhythmia. Means that if you see this sort of ECG, you should not waste a single minute. Because anytime the patient may develop ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, that will invite a catastrophic situation. So anything having this initially and immediately start treatment, at least start with loading dose of dual antiplatelet therapy. And if you consider the treatment of STMI over the last 50 years, there was a tremendous development in the treatment. Back in say uh, 1960, say, uh, there was only 30% mortality uh, out of acute myocardial infarction, which Subsequently, because of the development of CCO and defibrillator in uh, early 70s and late, uh, um, late 70s, because of CCO, the acute MI 
that that uh, mortality bring down to 15% and in the late 70s and early 80s because of the development of thrombolytic therapy this has gone further down to about 10% and in the late 80s and now on onward that number has reduced to single digit because of development of primary uh, angioplasties so there is a tremendous development in the treatment of acute myocardial infarction so if a patient having acute myocardial infarction, uh, we should initiate the treatment by a term called MONAC, M-O-N-A-C. Morphine, oxygen, nitrate, aspirin, clopidogrel. You just load it immediately once the patient is diagnosed ac acute myocardial infarction. Then you have got three options in your hand. One is thrombolysis, other is a primary angioplasty. ECG, is that occluded occluded artery is active at you i see it uh -huh. oh, oh, oh. occluded artery sir, uh, present are... uh, sorry oh, sorry sorry sir i'll just close it presentation is uh -huh. uh, just a minute how many hours share corbo uh, sir, apni, uh, animation to close kore diven, sir. Presentation to our share kore sir. Screen share kore presentation to click kore sir. Ami ki... Ekon dhekha jai? Ji dhekha jai, sir. Okay. Ami ona onek kon aage thikhe ami ibo dhoi. Ji, ji, sir. Ami bhekhyal kore chilande. Isi ji thikhe. Is it from here? Yes, sir. Here? Should I start from here? Wadud? Monarch, monarch ticket should go in, sir. Okay, monarch. okay. This sir. is? Yes, sir. Sir, kindly. Yes, uh, yes, sir. yes sir. This is easy. Slide okay, share, slide share, share Corbin, sir. Pura yeah, sir. Pura Kochi. Yeah, Amiki can take a Shuru Corbo? Yes, sir. Tarek can take a Shuru Corbin. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, that I, I just deliberately want to show this ECG to everybody. This is a ECG. It is so dangerous. You are seeing the extensive anterior myocardial infarction with sky highest elevation. This is a CCG, is a precursor of malignant arrhythmia. So, anybody having this sort of ECG, one should not waste a single minute. Immediately start treatment by loading the patient with dual antiplatelet and other uh, um, um, treatment before thrombolysis. Because if you wait, or, or there, will be, there will be a malignant arrhythmia in the form of VT or VF, and you may lose the patient. So if you consider the treatment of migraine infarction for last 15 year, 50 years, there was a tremendous development. Uh, like uh, it was in 60s, it was 30%. Uh, but now in 2000, uh, after the uh, so 90s, it has brought down to single disease because of primary angioplasty. In between uh, late 70s, there was a uh, development of CCU. Uh, and, and defibrillator and in 80s the development of thrombolytic therapy so all together these are the development that happened during the last uh, 50 years for the treatment of stale mind so uh, once you diagnose the patient with acute myocardial infarction you start this monarch morphine oxygen nitrate aspirin clopidogrel just after loading this then you have got three options one is the thrombolysis Otherwise, the primary angioplasty or pharmacoinvasive. So any of these three is mandatory for this patient. So there is a, a, a guideline. Uh, uh, I want to actually give this uh, picture not for the education purpose, but also the beneficial of those who uh, can be the victim of acute migraine infarction uh, uh, in this, um, uh, um, uh, in this uh, gathering many of our own relative or uh, may be affected. So if you know the guideline, at least you can apply for your own family member or your patient. Like any ST elevated MI after diagnosis of acute MI with the ECG, if the patient is transferable to a place where there is a primary angioplasty within two hours, you should ship the patient to that center. If the distance is more than two hours, you should not send the patient to that hospital. Rather than you send the patient to nearby hospital where there is a facilities for thrombolysis. And 
thrombolysis should be given within 10 minutes. Once you finish the thrombolysis, do a ECG at 60 minutes and 90 minutes. If you see that there is well perfusion, fine. If it's that not well perfused, reperfused by seeing the regression of ST, at least 50% within 60 to 90 minutes, it means that it is failed thrombolysis. So immediately you send the patient for, for nearby PCA capable hospital for invasive procedure. Even if the patient reperfused well, there is also an option. You can send the patient to a PCA capable hospital within three to 24 hours. So the guideline so far, uh, everybody in the property therapy take place as soon as possible, within 10 minutes. And also the indication of primary PCA, if you can uh, do it within two hours duration. But Scenario in our region is not like that. The guideline is made in a place where they count the distance by counting the hour. Means that what we say, if somebody says that, uh, how much time you need to go from here to Mirpur, in an open road, it will take 15 minutes, but a workout, it may need three hours. So here in, uh, uh, in a place like uh, India, Bangladesh, this highly populated and traffic the option of this hour is not that true. So here, pharmacoinvasive is the best option, I think, uh, for uh, the better outcome comparable to primary angioplasty. It is not the battle between thrombolytic and PCI. It is the combination of thrombolysis followed by pharmacoinvasive, like followed by angioplasties or invasive procedure. That is called pharmacoinvasive. So this is all about ischemic part of coronary artery disease. And uh, I am also said uh, that it need immediate attention like aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, because they also need similar type of attention as acute coronary syndrome or acute MI. Let us start with the history of a 55 years old tall stretch male patient with poorly controlled hypertension, having a history of ascending aorta dilatation previously by echocardiography, experience severe tearing type of chest pain, radiate to back while lifting a heavy uh, structures. From the history, the red marker, you can identify these are the risk factors for certain disease. And on examination, pulse is 100 per minute, blood pressure on the right arm is 160 by 100, on the left arm, 120 and 80. And on auscultation, you are finding an early diastolic marmor in aortic area. So many of you must have identified the yes. What is the probabilities? By X-ray, there is a widening of the meristinum. <coughs> by echocardiography, the root is dilated, grade one year. And by transesophageal echo, you may also find uh, uh, the flap of the uh, dissecting aneurysmal part of the aorta, and by spiral CT, you can definitely identify the type of the dissection. So, as I said, by the red marker, the predisposing factor is pre existing aortic aneurysm, uncontrolled blood pressure, Marfan syndrome, or any other collagen vascular disease affecting the aorta, weightlifting, history of vasculitis, pregnancy, drug, trauma, even during cardiac catheterization or aortic intervention may predispose this aortic dissection. <coughs> Sorry. So this is few images. The widening of the X-ray uh, chest by widening of the meristem. By CT, you can see the false and true lumen. And by transesophageal, you can also see true and false lumen in the arch or descending aorta. So this way, you can identify aortic dissection with severe chest pain. These are common classification for the treatment of uh, management and main indication of management to reduce blood pressure to 100 and 120, keep blood pressure pulse within uh, uh, less than 60s, monitor the complication and keep the blood pressure control with the calcium channel blocker, beta blocker or GTN. And on the basis of the type, you can plan for the management like if type A surgical, if type B without complication, keep in medical management, if type B with complication, you can use 
or surgical intervention or intervention management by putting a graft. For long term management, you also need to control blood pressure by beta blocker with serial imaging, but three months, six months, 12 months for seeing the progression of the uh, resection. So let us resume another history. A 65 years female had a history of prolonged bedridden with fractured neck femur, underwent surgical correction. She had a previous history of DVT, suddenly complained of severe chest pain, collapse, and profuse sweating. Pulse is very high, more than 100, blood pressure. The patient is in the state of shock. This is the sinus tachycardia, multiple PVC. And on echo, you are seeing the dilatation. Uh, 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 RV dilatation and duplex, you may find did, uh, deep vein thrombosis. So this is nothing but the pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism actually, it is a part spectrum of the disease called venous thromboembolism. The venous thromboembolism usually, it appears from the uh, vein of the lower or upper limb or the pelvic vein, which embolize ultimately loss to the pulmonary artery, give rise to pulmonary embolism. And the clinical presentation, actually depend on the burden of the thrombus, degree of pulmonary occlusion, and also comorbidities and basal cardiopulmonary reserve. Not all embolic patients are present with this sort of uh, acute problem. These are the primary risk factor, like uh, um, commonly idiopathic, maybe more than 65 years old, hypercoagulable state, obesity, history of previous deep vein thrombosis, prolonged immobilization, lower limb trauma, recent surgery, pregnancy, oral. These are all the possible risk factor of DBT. And once you diagnose, then it, it can be categorized into massive, submassive, non-massive on the basis of clinical spectrum. If the patient is in the state of shock and bradycardia, this is massive. If the patient is having pressure, but more than 90, RB dilatation, elevated BNP or troponin, this is submassive. And if none of this, it is low risk pulmonary embolism. And you may not need to be that serious, what you should be serious for massive one. And as I said earlier, this, the symptom usually depends on the uh, size of the uh, embolus, uh, size of the clot. Commonly presenting with the chest pain, sometimes severe dyspnea, faint or collapse, sometimes a small one with pruritic pain because of infraction or maybe hemoptysis. And sometimes it's a circulatory collapse in the state of shock, tachycardia, tachypnea. There may be J raised JVP. Patient may be cyanose, and there may be gallop, uh, uh, right ventricular gallop. So you need to uh, identify uh, these things with some test like uh, suspicion on the clinical ground. If you do for D dimer, there will be increased. Troponin can be increased. BNP can be increased. This is, this is non diagnostic most of the cases, although many of us say S1, Q3, T3, but ironically, this only present in 6 to 15% of patients. Mostly they present with sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, then maybe uh, right axis deviation, right bandage blood block. On echocardiography, you can find RV dysfunction. There may be floating thrombus in the RV. And CT scan, you may find a filling defect. VQ scan, you can identify the defect in perfusion and ventilation defect. And duplex ultrasound, you can find uh, the evidence of deep vein thrombosis, especially in lower end and pelvis, which is the source of this pulmonary embolism. And treatment option for non-massive and submassive: start anticoagulant for five days and overlap with the oral anticoagulant for two days, keeping INR two to three times. And should be continued with periodical follow-up of the DVTs. For massive, you need immediate attention for thrombolysis with alteplase or tenecteplase. There may be an option of catheterization or maybe have a surgical option for removal of clot. Patient with a, a chronic thromboembolism can be prevented pulmonary embolism by using a IV uh, inter, uh, uh, IVC filter uh, for for the development of pericardial uh, pulmonary embolism. Let us uh, another history of 24 years old male suddenly developed severe shortness of breath accompanied with pleuritic type of pain and with uh, 
changes in the respiration, especially at the zenith of inspiration, the catchhold, catchhold of the breath, like pleuritic pain. Pulse blood pressure pulse is more than 100, blood pressure 100 by 70, respiratory rate is more than 40, chest movement and expansibility reduced on the right side with hyper resonance on percussion note and absence of breath sound on the same side. If you go for a extra chest, you will find a collapsed lung on the right side with shifting of mediastinum. It is nothing but the pneumothorax. And if you do X ray, there will be visible visceral pericardium with a thin, clear line with collapse in the margin. And there may be a marker of uh, the medicinal shifting on the opposite side. There may have pleural effusion. And ultrasound can give another uh, aid for the uh, whether it is pleural effusion only, uh, pneumothorax, or accompanied with uh, pleural pericardial effusion. Uh, pleural, uh, uh, hemothorax or pneumothorax combination. From the treatment point of view, if it is small, means that less than two to three centimeters observed, if necessary, give oxygen. But if it is more than three centimeter, you need to evacuate the uh, air by needle aspiration. Sometimes, if not resolved, you can use a chest drain. But if there is a accompanied with hemothorax, you need uh, uh, chest tube drains for both removal of the fluid and air. There's another group of patients with acute chest pain, usually rare, uh, but that happened. This rapture is your failures. Is the severe chest pain, patient may go to shock with some subcutaneous emphysema, pneumothorax, pneumomedistinium, there may be pleural effusion. Commonly, it is iatrogenic because of endoscopic uh, performance and any patient with malignancy or any other uh, reason for the upper GI endoscopy. There may be spontaneous esophageal rupture, uh, Borham syndrome, and is a triad, macular triad, the chest pain, vomiting, and subcutaneous emphysema. This triad is indicating a uh, esophageal rupture, uh, spontaneous esophageal rupture. So this can cause chest pain, uh, um, but it also needs immediate attention. So uh, this is all about what I should not miss. But also, I need to be give attention to relatively low risk category. Because you need to identify what is the cause. The patient may ask, what is the cause of my chest pain? So you also need to uh, do some uh, tests, some um, uh, examination for low risk category patient who may complain of chest pain. One of the common complaints is uh, of pain is in the patient with mitral valve prolapse. This is mitral valve prolapse. Common, com commonly, the patient is dyspneic, fatigue, palpitation, usually female, lean and thin. There may be chest wall deformity. There may be auscultation, mid-systolic, click, left systolic murmur. Echocardiography is the, the confirmatory diagnosis. And if the patient is symptomatic, uh, then you may need to reassure the patient with beta blocker. But if there is a severe MR, in that case, you may need surgical replacement or valve, mitral valve clip or repair of the mitral valve to reduce mitral regurgitation in patient with mitral valve prolapse. So another relatively low risk patient is the pericardial pain. This is also chest pain, but it is retrosternal continuous. It is a dull aching intensity, varies with the movement and physics of respiration because it also accompanied with some form of pleuropericarditis. So patient can breath hold are catching uh, the uh, whole, uh, breath at the zenith of inspiration. And also patient takes a short, shallow breath to avoid pain. It also decreases with lean and forward and patient pain may radiate to back or in between trapezius. And interestingly, you may confuse with the ECG because here also ECG may mimic macular infraction. But if you carefully see the ECG, it usually concavity upward. And it, it does not follow the rule of the territory, like anterior, inferior, or posterior. It is a global, like one, two, three, V1, V2, V3. Means that all the area is involved. This is the uh, difference between the ischemic versus uh, pericarditis. So once you uh, identify clinically pericarditis, then you need to confirm it by uh, at least two of the four, like chest pain, 
friction rub and ECG change with the echocardiographic evidence of pericardial effusion, you can identify this pericardial diagnosis. But you also be careful about not to miss the possibilities of cardiac tamponade because from the clinical side, a uh, patient may be tachypneic, tachycardic, JBP may be raised, pulse may be paradoxic, there may be Cushman sign. And if you do an echo, you will see the feature of cardiac tamponade. That also need immediate attention uh, to relieve both the pressure and also chest pain. So commonly pericarditis usually NSAIDs are rough, but uh, you can also use colcysteine or steroid. Mainly monitor the patient about the possibilities of cardiac tamponade, and if it happens, you do immediate pericardial synthesis and also target towards the treating the underlying causes of pericarditis. Another uh, common one is the esophageal spasm that mimics angina. So it may get precipitated by male, radiate to back, and sometimes really by sublingual GTM. And especially it is related to the supine position after eating or drinking and a patient might have a history of reflux. So it may sometimes misguide you from ischemic versus esophageal spasm. And here also, not only symptom is enough to diagnose, you can go for other tests that will differentiate esophageal from, uh, esophageal spasm from ischemic uh, chest pain. The JARD is another uh, group of patient, they typically retrosternal burning pain, and it produced usually by food or supine position. It is because of the reflux. And usually uh, it's relieved uh, by antacid, but not by GTN, as opposed to uh, esophageal spasm. And another common variety is peptic ulcer disease. Usually epigastic and ache, burning pain, maybe it's local tenderness uh, accompanied with this, happen in empty stomach, not on exertion. And usually it uh, happens at the late night and it is relieved by say antacid or cold drinks or a cold milk or, or PPI, but not GTN. So these are the differentiating points, the peptic ulcer and ischemic. Biliary colic simply, uh, similarly, it is a constant pain, sometimes colicky pain, lasts for minutes to hours, and deep aching pain in the right hypochondrium may refer to the shoulder. And usually it brought after the fatty, fatty food, a big Burger King, uh, in the fast food shop. But it's not related with the exhaustion. Simple uh, ultrasound is enough to differentiate these things from others. This is a biliary colic. There is a good number of patients, especially uh, uh, a, 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 in the young age. Uh, this is because of musculoskeletal pain. This pain is characteristically, it changes with the position, posture, accompanied by localized tenderness. This is very pathognomic. Patient can clean cut, pinpoint the location of the pain. And worse at the end of the day, commonly it is because of osteoarthritis, costochondritis, maybe chest or soft tissue injury, coxsackie viral infection may also cause uh, musculoskeletal pain. This uh, the, the neural pain basically. Herpes joster, post herpes joster pain also can give musculoskeletal pain um, that, that, that mimic uh, ischemic pain. The cervical radiculopathy, as I said, the compression of cervical nerve made it to the compression of uh, nerve root produces uh, this uh, pain. Usually it runs in the dermatome, commonly on the shoulder and back, worsening on the movement of the neck and accompanied with the local tendons in the uh, neck uh, joint. So this is cervical radic radiculopathy. It's completely characteristic compared to others. So uh, if you don't find any other things, you should not forget the psychogenic cause of chest pain because about 25% of patient attending the emergency department with chest pain are psychogenic or panic disorder that are all rarely been recognized physician. So it has got very peculiar characteristics, autonomic complaint, complaints, multiple presentation as a cluster of physical complaint, a repetitive history of negative cardiac pathology. Patient is coming to a cardiologist, but repeatedly he will say, no, I don't think it is cardiac, but I have got chest pain. So he will not go to other place unless you assure it is not cardiac. 
So this patient has got a clinical profile of anxiety or panic disorder, anxious looking. So one should give a special attention of this sort of patient to reassure them, to reassure them that this is not cardiac by giving, you may need some test, even you may need CT angiogram to assure them this is not cardiac. That can give him confidence uh, to get rid of this psychogenic pain. So uh, I think I have got uh, enough discussion on it. And in conclusion, chest pain is most frequent encountered complaint of patient to a physician. Each disease has unique pattern of chest pain characterized by clinical uh, clinician should rapidly and promptly assess the chest pain to minimize unnecessary investigation, hospitalization, and cost reduction workup and maximize the patient outcome. All patients with chest pain should be evaluated with a history, physical examination, ECG, X-ray, biomarker quickly to identify as cardiac versus non-cardiac. If cardiac, maybe acute coronary syndrome versus non-acute coronary syndrome. And definitely treatment should be started immediately. And also don't miss the life-threatened four disease like chest pain of acute coronary syndrome, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, and esophageal rupture. I think I have, I have given, I've taken enough time for you and bothered you. Thank you very much for your uh, patience hearing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you sir. sir. Last uh, 50 minutes, you elaborated yes. this chest pain infection. Excellent, sir. I think, uh, Professor Wadu, sir, few comments. I think excellent demonstration of chest as Momritan Bhai was saying, we have to understand uh, how to approach to a patient with chest pain, but that may come in handy in uh, salvaging our own near and dear ones. This is very, very important. One thing I should always ask I, and the students during exam time, if a 30-year-old uh, lady come to you with complaint of chest pain, what are the questions you're going to ask? The same pre presentation in a 55-year-old male, what are the questions you're going to ask? If you know how to approach to these two different persons and remembering what are the probable causes, then your questioning and arriving at a proper diagnosis will be much easier. That's the essence of this lecture. He has elaborated on it to make us understand which is very critical, we need to interfere now, and what is not critical, we can tell the patient, they reassure the patient and send for uh, further investigation only if needed. Morijan Bhai, many thanks. You have done a very Thank you, very thank very you, Adud. Uh, the, before answering thank the question from the audience, actually, I, am, I usually I'm not the examiner, so I think the question been uh, asked by the uh, by, uh, by the participant, after my answer, you examiner should also uh, give a little bit of uh, uh, answer because the student always uh, answered the question uh, what the examiner asked. So if I say some way, uh, as I'm not taking the examination, so I think Wadud and others who are sitting here uh, can also add to assure the student uh, the what should be the proper answer of this question. Thank you, sir. I, uh, Professor Chodhi Meshkat, sir, is a good clinician and he's the examiner. Uh, Meshkat, sir, please, a uh, few comments, then we'll go to the question and question answer. Few comments regarding previous class. Sir, it has been an elaborate and excellent presentation, especially you have given emphasis on acute chest pain. Uh, the case that we cannot miss, the, the cases that we should not miss, and uh, we should be able to make diagnosis in patient with acute chest pain, whatever may be the cause, cardiac or non-cardiac. And even if it is cardiac, then what should be the algorithm? What 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 is our proper job to do instantly? As a, a, a as an interventionalist, we know uh, you are the leading and the terrific interventionalist of the country. You always your attention, your focus of attention is always at the acute care of a patient that has been reflected in your lecture. But in case of chest pain, we have, uh, we as a, uh, basically as a uh, people who work with the amazing 
chest pain and imaging is a very challenging aspect. In many, many cases, we do not know which modalities of uh, imaging should be applied for a particular case. That, is, that needs an elaborate discussion and uh, that should have a different session. Uh, that I can say, that, that part of the discussion, uh, that, that should be a separate issue, sir. Uh, exactly. uh, sir, have been, um, uh, sir have been my assistant professor in 1991 when I was in SSMMCH. So he was teacher 30 years back and uh, he could be an uh, excellent teacher. And now after uh, doing all this intervention in recent times, he has given attention on cardiac heart failure and some of the clinical aspect. So this is how actually the, we should, uh, we like to see our great people are evolving. Uh, now a, a time when we can give little attention to our clinical side and the amazing side and many other aspects of the cardiology that has been neglected over years. And uh, I would like to see Sir to have uh, being involved in all this aspect and giving support to all, all of his colleagues so that this subject develops, the nation develops and he have been doing a terrific job for the nation so long. So uh, now he has extended his hand to the non-interventional part. So it is nice to see you. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be able to answer some of the questions because students may have many questions uh, on the topics which we can supplement. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, as as uh, Mr. Sir said, uh, all the emergency women in the outside Bangladesh, I see in the emergency, beside emergency, there is the imaging room. In the in the in the nearby country also, there is the emergency. Then the imaging imaging is the most important part of diagnosis of chest pain. The early part of diagnosis of chest pain. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Uh, I see a uh, lots of busy practitioner with us. Dr. Ashish De from Chittagong. I think uh, I today we have, uh, find Ashish De, Chittagong. I think is close the chamber and come to our session. Ashish De, please. Ashish De. Okay. And any question or comments? Thank you, Sir Mohanjan Sir, for your nice and brilliant presentation, Swad Sir, and thank you, Mohsin, for giving me the opportunity, Sir. It is a nice lecture, and also Sir elaborately described all the uh, almost all the aspects of the chest pain, not only the ischemic origin, also gastrointestinal, respiratory, and also. But how to evaluate a chest pain? Uh, as the Mr. Sir mentioned, that uh, evaluation of chest pain by different modalities of exercise tolerance tests and also other uh, stress eco it will be uh, most likely another lecture sir, i want to ask sir a, a practical question sir. Yeah. though it is not related to this practically that we have faced uh, as in the chiragan that i also trained from you after as you mentioned as ses uh, that after developing mi after 48 hours as the guideline says, after 48 hours, if total occlusion, you can reopen it. But after 48 hours, as in the government hospital, you know, also in NSUD, most of the patient cannot do effort um, within 48 hours. And also, we also uh, cannot do because of, uh, in the government setting, because of lack of facilities. After 48 hours, when we discharge the patient, and we call them to come after two to three weeks or one month, then we do angiogram and the angioplasty. If the patient has no symptom, if the totally occluded artery, then is there any benefit of opening the artery? Or if the 90% or 80% critical stenosis, is there any difference of opening that artery? Uh, really, it's a like, $1 million question because there is wide variation of the practice of cardiologists uh, in, in this particular group of patient uh, and patient really puzzled. Uh, I think for our safety, the, what guideline says, one should follow this because the guideline was uh, been developed after a lot of uh, randomized trial and conclusively they have shown that this benefit is there or not. Yes, there will be individual variation one important part that I actually uh, consider here in our part of the world, because guidelines says been developed by the uh, all the Western people, the rich countries people, there were the, the, the 
you know, treatment facilities is insured by the government or by insurance company. But here, uh, it is not like that. The patient will need to pay from his own pocket. So they prioritize their choice depends on their immediate burning issue. <clears throat> Say, for example, a 35 years old, young, <clears throat> not been established financially. He is not been now supported by the parents because now he's earning not that much earn to support uh, the this extensive uh, uh, expensive treatment and not to that to borrow money from other because people will not give him loan because he is not not of that uh, rich person so chest pain with acute mi of this group of patient once he get rid of uh, this acute crisis it become his second priority he will not come to a doctor unless that is a symptom. That is why I am seeing the young patient with acute myocardial infarction at the age of below 40 coming with heart failure. Because below 40, this group of patient is the most uh, vulnerable to develop heart failure, especially in myocardial infarction. Reason is this, the delayed infection, they, 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 the high health is not his priority. So delay attention in the doctor's attention, delayed in the hospitalization, delayed in invasive procedure. Many of them don't have the capacity to go to invasive. So in this group, especially young patient, if we find that the patient is even asymptomatic, even asymptomatic, although this is guideline said that they should go for some test, treadmill test. If there is no ischemia, then you should not go, you don't need any, any, uh, for that invasive procedure. But nowadays, angiogram is so simple. It's a two-minute job. And it's, the risk has gone good so low. So why not to do a test? Go for an angiogram. And if you show this guy that this time you have survived, your coronary has got 20-30% block, but multiple block. So be careful. You are diabetic, control your diet. He will know that, yes, I have got this. So he will be more concerned more cautious about his future planning of life. So it, that is the why I am telling that it should be individualized on the scenario of our perspective. Yes, after 48 hours, a patient coming with acute MI. And if you find that, if you even go for angiogram, if you see that the vessel is totally blocked, the result is not good. If you, even if you open it, because that area is totally dead. You need to evaluate it by viable test. Because if the patient has got other two vessels free of disease, the LAD territory with ejection fraction of 35, 40 can live long. It will not give me much benefit if you open it in a dead vessel. It is important, sir. It is. Important. So even you can identify by echocardiography also. The bottom is stress echo, you can go. A thin echogenic. L L L LED territory, there is no point to open this. Vessel. Also in coronary angiogram, you can also identify this. Say for example, patient having a retrograde feeling. That indicate there is some viable myocardium there. And it was a chronic blockage, so that the patient developed retrograde feeling. It is proved that there is a, some viable area there. Even if the amount as everybody says, the 10% viable myocardium is indicated for intervention. But a patient having a 30% ejection fraction, if viable myocardium is 8%, I will go for intervention because that will add. That will add. Otherwise, he will be, all the time, he will be with anti failure treatment. So, individualize from your own experience, definitely. Patient benefit is a priority. Thank you. Thank I don't you. think uh, have I uh, explained. Uh, 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 satisfy you or you uh, want to know you. further? Uh, if you want to know further, then I'll ask uh, Wadud, uh, then Meshkar, and any of this. Uh, I am Ashok, Ashok, anyone, anyone can I have a question. I am requesting, requesting to the panelists and also uh, participants ask yes. question. It is the class. So ask and question for the, the student. 
management facility is a the chest pain sir sir nicely described show any confusion in the chest pain evaluation should consider it more about it dr shweb ahmed uh, is from select uh, please uh, read your question i uh, welcome dr abdul aziz from maldiv he joined today uh, aziz welcome you here dr aziz please unmute maldiv please unmute yourself aziz Aziz. Please unmute, Aziz. Why? Please unmute. No, I will. I will request. I will request the, all the participant to ask question okay. directed towards the examinee. Right, right. Only for the examinee. Because the program is for the examinee. Yes, yes. Only for the examinee. Dr. Abdul Aziz. Will help them. That will help them. Yeah, Dr. Aziz. Good. Good evening, Good evening. sir. Yeah. yeah. Professor Mumin is the man. I have enjoyed. Yeah. Good evening, sir. My professor, my sir, my teachers, you all are there. And uh, today I actually enjoyed Professor Momin Zaman uh, lecture. Uh, it includes all types of chest pain. It was very, very <clears throat> uh, informative uh, presentation. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you very much, sir. I am now in Maldives. I studied in Bangladesh. Oh. And uh, still, <clears throat> uh, uh, want to learn more and more and this is my first uh, participation in your uh, presentation i thank hope you. i will uh, continue this the participation in future thank you very much thank you that is welcome your student also thank your... you sir very much Zamar, sir. thank you as is thank you dr shweb your question just uh focus on exam examination dr shweb Please ask. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir, yes, sir. for your brilliant yes. presentation. And you already uh, elaborately uh, uh, you discuss everything. And in, in a very, very simplified way. So, my question is uh, you say uh, uh, through thorough meticulous history taking and investigation, you said around maybe around 16% patient we miss, uh, SES patient we miss. Why this happens? This happens, sir. Uh, uh, this your, is your personal experience, sir. Uh, I, I have another question, sir. Uh, we face every time uh, some somatoform patient, uh, hypochondriatic patient, uh, they come to our uh, chamber. Uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, panic disorder or anxiety. This kind of patient, uh, even sir, my one patient, I, I have to do, uh, do uh, angiogram for, for him. To satisfy him, I, said I will lose lost this patient. Uh, if you uh, uh, don't uh, counsel this patient, so who the, for somatoform disorder, hypertic patient, what is the uh, main treatment um, uh, uh, assurance, reassurance, or anything else for hypochondriasis patient, somatoform disorder? Patient ah. come with panic disorder or anxiety, this kind of thing. First of all, first of all, I think uh, this is a, a group of people, mostly cardiologists and want to be a cardiologist. So I and think- sir, my, uh, If you allow me, I have a third question. Recently, uh, CT angiogram available in our country, especially in the Silet area. Uh, and uh, we are very much confused. Uh, uh, you, you said in your lecture, uh, low and intermediate uh, patient, uh, we can refer for CT angiogram. But when and uh, when we, uh, time is very important, how to uh, we convince this kind of patient to refer for CT angiogram? Thank you, Shweb. Okay. Uh, one, two, last, three. Last, uh, two last, one. last two first. Yeah. Uh, in my lecture, I have already mentioned the low and intermediate risk patient, chest pain with low and intermediate risk patient, normal ECG, normal biomarker. So the probabilities of ischemic heart disease is very low. So this probability patient is best managed by CT angio. Because immediately, you got or after CT. Yes, you, immediately you can go. It's a 20 minute job. If you linger it, either you'll have to be on dual antiplatelet or some other anti treatment, psychological trauma. So it can be maybe within 72 hours you can finish this job. The yes, you do have, you don't have. And it, that's why it is now it become class one indication for the patient with chest pain, evolution, um, uh, imaging mortalities. Uh, second question is- Can I ask something? Yes, sir. Something. Please finish, then I'll end. Uh, 
yeah. your another question was the hypochondry uh, and so uh, I, I, i think this is psychiatric patient not solely what we are seeing uh, uh, as a non psychiatric doctor there may be more than this my role is at least i will not miss this patient as a cardiologist ischemic versus, even if it have got gall gallbladder i am not going to treat this patient for gallbladder i'll send the patient to surgeon if it is any gi problem i am not going to treat this patient at least i should understand this is gi problem so refer the patient to gi so this way i can i think you can uh, uh, but if, if this pain have uh, chest pain this patient don't like to go to psychiatry they change that cardiologist again go to the cardiologist once you assure him even if necessary by city ngo he will not come to you again otherwise he will come repeatedly thank you sir yes sir what is this what is this please add add something what is that do you hear me uh, can i add something sir. yes sir one yes sir yeah one thing is important Uh, in a city in which we have to use contrast even in this covid era they have shown that if you do only the coronary calcium scoring yeah only that thing can really differentiate the patient who need aggressive treatment the patient who need only uh, conservative treatment because if the calcium is not there the plaque is soft the plaque is very unlikely to be totally occlusive and that patient only with every risk factor if you modify the risk factor the chances of having an acute mi in the near future very low uh, italian study they have already shown that even in covid era when the plaque is supposed to be unstable they have differentiated quite well to whom to do the whole angiogram only by calcium scoring and that when we do the chest ct hs ct we can actually see that tell the radiologist please look at the have a look at the coronary arteries if they do that you can readily differentiate whether this patient is having some problem or not second the hypochondria patient one of the problem is that these patients need help what we do a dur ata kono heart attack nei janda kichu hobe na kichu hobe na kichu don't do that we have to satisfy the desire the need of attention and treatment tell them yes you have some symptom this is going to be a nuisance but this is not going to be a danger and as momijan bhai has said if you want to be uh, really sure to a city this is enough and otherwise the patient will come back again and again to you and they really do not want to go to a psychiatrist that is a common problem momijan bhai ami ektu ami ektu add korte pari रिस्कोमेटिक and the power of zero i mean in asymptomatic patient who is stratify the risk if the calcium score zero then 10 years uh, chance of uh, cardiac event is very low less than 1% so it is asymptomatic patient you can ask for uh, calcium score and to rule out obstructive coronary artery disease in acute chest pain i think coronary ct has tremendous role that already uh, mentioned by professor mohan jain sir and here is mentioned this low and intermediate risk intermediate risk range is large risk it is 10 to 90% probability of ischemic heart disease 90% up to intermediate so uh, when we confuse the chest pain is atypical ecg there is subtle changes Uh, if you ask uh, uh, biomarker, it will take four hours to six hours, and uh, so in that case, if we want to rule out the obstructive coronary disease, it is uh, it is better to do CT angiogram to ensure the patient you have no uh, obstructive coronary artery disease and the patient can discharge. Uh, I think in this uh, this message can convey to our fellows, junior, and this yeah. will help. Thank yes, you very much. Yes. Thank you. Actually, I that, that I shall mention the low and intermediate patient. 
with normal ecg normal biomarker can go straight away ct ngo to rule out coronary artery disease sir sometimes there is there is subtlety what in t inversion non specific t change ha this patient can also can be ruled out we have yes. we have i have done already around uh, thousands of uh, ct angiogram most of the uh, not acute case but most of the referred case for chest pain and mostly young female even uh, there is non specific std change but the patient's coronary is normal so history is very important basically yes, history sir. is very important yes sir his history hmm. and the type of angina location angina yes, yeah i mean i mean to ct ne bol जी and there has been a very good relationship and if you use only ct ffr the sensitivity of detecting coronary artery disease is as high as 90 to 95% and again what dr ajay has mentioned there are pitch probability group intermediate probability group meaning that sir you have done angiogram and you have missed you have found some uh, coronary lesion of 50 to 60% a uh, which parsi is not a candidate for intervention but we know those are the lesion are very vulnerable to make myocardial infarction that is going to be missed by any form of pharmacological and stress revascularization test you you do but with now new ct um, ct technology we can find the soft tissue soft uh, soft plaque we can find the uh, positive remodeling napkin type of calcification which are the surrogate marker for the future coronary even there have been in recent interesting there have been interesting issues because the nice guideline which is for the uk people they recommend ct ct angiogram as only class 1 indication they have relegated all other investigation in acute and in chronic cases on the other hand in in united states they have still kept ett as class 1 indication where they have Uh, ct angiogram as class 2 b indication while the european society of cardiology has done some form of compromise they have they have put uh, both ct angiogram ct scan and the amazing um, uh, uh, modalities stress amazing mortality as modality as class 1 so how how we know that which, which particular test uh, is going to be helpful there are two important studies that should be mentioned for the students sir i think things should be very well, little bit clear as we deal with um, patient with chest pain we deal with patient with some coronary plaque we have at the one end patient with very low probability and you know if you have high probability you can do the angiogram even in acute coronary syndrome you, if they belong to high risk group you go to the cath lab but again when you have selected this patient that they should not go to the cath lab then you we really need to restatify them with appropriate uh, test that is why i was telling sir uh, probably a different session is needed but what is what is very required to be mentioned about city city and jungam is there are two leading uh, leading study has come one from scott uh, scott study from scotland and another from promise from united states where they have seen if you if you do the city and jungam ct scan and uh, if you do the stress test and if you keep observing these two group of patient then those patient whom you have not sent to the coronary angiogram if you have said they are not candidate for coronary angiogram by stress test then you will have some coronary event in that group but if ct scan says that this group do not need coronary angiogram then the mortality is less in that group this was 5 years 5 years study so there are many way we know how particular test is performing not not in the traditional way when we compare with invasive coronary angiogram and we have the head to head uh, comparison with other things we also look at the mortality over 5 years and we see when particular test said no how much uh, how efficiently it is performing it is its duty in saying no so sir uh, uh, another recent study which is known as a pacific study comprising 200 patient they have involved ct ffr 
they have included uh, only FFR, they have included CT, uh, the uh, MRI, MRI angiogram, and the SPECT. The sensitivity was much more higher in CT with FFR. So this is an excellent thing that is coming up. And one thing, sir, I, I want to mention in this regard, if you do angioplasty in a patient with, which has got FFR, FFR, more, FFR more than eight, then probably you are doing harm than any benefit. So doing angioplasty in a patient with coronary vessel does not always give benefit to the patient. So it is recommended as from FAME study that only you have to revascularize in a vessel which has FFR of less than seven. So sir, these are the few things has to be kept in the mind when we go for revascularization, we keep some people not to go for revascularization. And there are a lot of jobs to be done in this part of the world and in Bangladesh. So uh, CT scan is, is since uh, there are confusion and there are many concerns about that. I have actually CT scan, you, CT you, scan in future it is coming much, much more elegant can, form. Again, can what add something? Is yes, sir. What is now? Because again, it, it does not exactly quantify the percentage either uh, compared to the coronary angiogram. But if you add these things with FFR, then you can, from the CT NGO, you can plan for bypass surgery, you can plan for even angioplasties. So CT scan in future is coming because uh, there is a little expansion of invasive angiogram in the, as a diagnostic tool. But there is a lot of things can be developed in a non-invasive way to identify the coronary artery disease by CT NGO. Sir, sir, we uh, have to be little, 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 act minute, just a minute. We have to be little pragmatic, sir. Nice guideline has given CT as plus one. There is no plus one indication, sir, because FFR is there, is now in practical real, real life. CT FFR. The problem is we are all talking about a CT FFR, etc. When the baseline CT NGO, the report is, do as an intervention cardiologist, do you rely on it? I don't think so. Here I, I have I have got patient where they are saying the RC is total near total occlusion. I find the LED has ninety percent lesion. RC is almost normal. This is happening every time. So the point is, the our CT NGOs are reported by radiologists who do not have actually any clear cut idea about the coronary anatomy and arteries. I ask our juniors, please like or joy, pay attention to the imaging section. Go yes, become a specialist in CT engine and others because it has tremendous value, as uh, Meshka Sar is mentioning. It is going to be a very important investigation, prime investigation in near future with CT FFR. So, I if you become an expert in that, we'll be really indebted to you. But we have a very right. interesting question. One question that has been asked is what is linked to Right, very nice question, sir. Dr. Prashant do you hear me? Ashok Dutto, I think uh, Dr. Ashok Dutto? Yes, yes. Yes. Dr. yes. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Yes, yes. Any question? Uh, yes, one uh, interesting question. What is the link angina? Link angina. Sorry, Moshin. Yeah. I, I actually don't know about link and gender. Anyone of you? Other side? Sir, so, uh, it's usually uh, we, we, sometimes we got patients. The patient present a uh, very important feature that is that he got chest pain after eating, especially when he is in full stomach and he complains of chest pain. And and uh, I think it's very frequent. It's frequent, frequent, frequently patient with. And, and it is a very uh, significant that he has got multivessel disease or very proximal lesion. And it is uh, uh, known as uh, link and then after eating or in full stomach. Actually, in 1962, in the heart, blood goes to the in the gastrointestinal artery, other arteries supply the stomachs. So, little bit the post angina? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, That's post prandial angina. Link angina is a different thing, actually. In 1962, a lady doctor, she was doing her research on uh, a, a chest pain which is related to gallbladder 
pancreas, uh, cervical, and other things. She find out all the dermatomes from cervical 3 to uh, dorsal 10, all those areas that are supplied by these dermatomes, the chest, they can mimic uh, the anterior chest wall pain, mimicking angina. That's linked angina, actually. And the one you were calling about is postprandial angina. That's related to the redistribution of blood to the... Yes. Uh, so that uh, should not be abdomen. a link. So, gallbladder uh, related chest pain, cervical spondylitis and radiculopathy related chest pain, and dorsal spondylosis, all are the li link angina, actually. Link angina. Triggering, 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 uh, triggering, triggering and what That's happens it. after eating, that is the redistribution of the uh, blood flow towards the stomach uh, rather than towards coronary. That produces the post parental angina. Uh, I will draw everyone's yes, attention sir. to another Hear me? In our country, yes, sir. Can, uh, 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 please come this, sir. sir. Lots of questions are in the chat box, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. In our country, yes, sir. we have very prevalent uh, helicobacter pylori infestation, around 70% of general population. The point is, it lives with us, we don't feel any problem. But in this patient, whenever you put aspirin in there, they start getting symptoms. And uh, I have been advocating this for last 15 years, and about for last uh, seven to eight years, it has been shown that the patient who have H. pylori gastritis, when you put antiplatelet in there, they have much higher level of G jar just with the reflux, and the pain mimics anterior central chest pain almost like angina. And you do a PCI, you have done a good job, you have given dual antiplatelet, the patient is having problem because they have given nitrate and everything, there's a smooth muscle relaxant. So think about it, treat it, you will find out patient is cured of that chest pain. That's another thing we should remember for, for uh, ask cardiologist. Before I go to the Arif, Dr. Sudish, Sudir, you, uh, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Please, please uh, let us ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. I would then, like to thank uh, Momenu Jaman, sir. Sir, thank you very much for the wonderful class. Uh, a smile really looks nice on your face. This is the honest compliment. And it brings out your heart on your face. And it seems as if it has really been made for you. I have never met you in person, but once I had an opportunity to see you through the glasses of cath lab when I had taken one of my friends that for coronary angiogram uh, at United and it was almost six years back. Sir. So I have a few questions. Uh, the first question is, can you please explain me the mechanism of walk through angina? I have gone through a number of books, but I, 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 I didn't find any satisfactory answer. Mechanism of walk through angina. Okay, the next question is for chest pain suggestive of acute coronary syndrome. Uh, which one is the best tool for trials patients into low risk category? Because you have also shown a number of uh, uh, scoring, like heart score, Goldman score is there, Timmy score, Grace score. So, out of this score, which one do you think is the best score? Okay, and, um, uh, and this question is. Uh, for Abdul Wadud sir, because he has been uh, working in a multi uh, speciality hospital and he uh, most likely gets a lot of uh, 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 referrals from gyne, gyne and ops department. So this is very practical. And what is the cause of chest pain during caesarean section under spinal anesthesia and how it can be treated? Because two of my relatives had also the same complaints after caesarean section, sir. And, and the next is very practical. And, and the question is how practical it is to diagnose a patient as a case of pericarditis, acute pericarditis, based just on ECG and chest pain. Because I have seen a large number of patients with acute, acute, perica, acute myocardial infarction with ST segment elevation having concavity upwards. And the book says that pericarditic pain can can be of any time and it can even mimic the pain of acute myocardial infarction and it can even radiate to the jaw, shoulder and the ulnar border of the hand. So the book is saying that never just never rely just on 
ECG and you should do all the investigations that you carry out for acute myocardial infarction because before you exclude it, uh, 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 acute, coronary, uh, acute coronary syndrome. So these are my questions, sir. I'll be glad to know the answers. Uh, 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 I think... Um, before forgetting, before forgetting a lot of questions, walk through angina. Yes. I, I think the, what is the causes of basically angina? Although it's a meaning that chest pain. Angina means uh, uh, chest pain, but walk through angina. It's a also. I think it is not truly pain. Some form of discomfort, especially once you start working, the beginning of that. This is the, is the, feature, of, this is the feature of chronic stable angina. And maybe it, this is because of, uh, because of uh, ischemic burden, there is increase in, uh, uh, um, increasing supply demand discrepancy, and the patient complained of this work through angina. And angina, as I said, angina means pain. But here, I think this is not truly the pain. It's a, some sort of discomfort rather than I should say pain. And, and, and uh, if anybody can add with this, and, and you have got can I add something, sir? Yes, can, hi, can you add on it? Walk through yes, angina. Sir, may I add something? Yeah. Uh, regarding uh, walk through angina, I have got some experience because uh, I did uh, more than 10 patients with similar symptoms did the angiogram. And about 10, 11, uh, most of the patients, 7 or 8, I have got the total occlusion of the on of the coronary. The okay. reason is initially at the beginning, uh, the collateral uh, flow from total occlusion or due to sub total occlusion, suppose the LED is totally or totally occluded, RCA is giving collateral to the LED. Initially, patient will feel pain when he starts working. But when he warms up, because of metabolic factor, these collaterals open up and give the supply to the LED. So uh, patient subsequently uh, relief of pain because of uh, dilatation of the collateral. So I have seen uh, several patients, about seven, eight patients I have seen that this patient has got subtotal or total occlusion of the one of the coronary artery, and that is supplied by collateral from the contralateral or ischialateral side. So uh, I think this is a uh, good explanation. Walk through the I think, put it in mechanism. Initially, at the beginning of the walking, patient feel pain. But when you continue walking, the pain relief. And, so, and uh, clinically, this group of patients... Good patient, for the heart, because group, increase the collaterals. Sometimes if you increase the exercise, open up the collaterals, increase the blood supply to the heart, <coughs> number one. Number two, they increase the coronary vascular tone, so reduce the blood supply in the heart. In case of multiple cell disease, usually occurred. In the Oshuda, slightly said LED block, RCA block, multiple cell disease. Second question, sir. The, the, Second question. Clinically, clinically, this group of patient is, uh, I should say, Compromising the quality of life, yes. prolonging the disease, yeah, and it is not good in long run, because when the chronic stable angina patient being depend on the collaterals from the, from the other side, at some point in their lifetime, you will it, when they will come, it is so extensive disease there is a little bit of yes. any intervention, maybe yes. even yes. surgery. So this is a protective phenomena basically the patient. Compromise with the quality of life, and and somebody somebody says, yeah, initially I was staying in fourth floor storied building. Now I have come down to first floor, so I don't have any problem. So the work through angina is similar. To and Ashok rightly said, it is because of the opening of the collaterals after walking, especially that period of pain. Next question is the lots of question chat box. Next question to the to, to uh, second question is which of the following score is the best tool to try? Uh, nothing. To score is that, the best, it's a nothing, score. nothing best like score that. that this score is unique. Uh, I think um, the, the score basically for the gray zone that where we cannot actually uh, come to conclusion. Individually, no score is fully hundred uh, sensitive to identify. It uh, can which, be which tool should we? 
it's tick two in the emergency department. I think, I think uh, to me, if you consider the history, ECG, risk factor, troponin, so that heart score, uh, that includes everything. And if it's less than three, four to Easier. six, more than seven, easy to remember. Okay. So yeah. this way you can, you can keep it as a, uh, like a guideline in your emergency department. Okay, sir. Last question. What uh, is the cause of treatment during cesarean section? Under uh, spinal cord. Uh, on the second sir, question, please. I have some add something. In yes. the, uh, uh, you will find out in this scoring system they have taken the age 65 as a cutoff point, but consider that that guideline has been created in the Western population where the first. Uh, the mean age of first attack is 63 to 65, whereas the first, the mean age of first attack in this subcontinent is around 53. Around. In our country, it's around 51. In Nepal, it's more than 55. So that age range, we should reduce it downwards. We should say after 50, our people are more vulnerable. You should consider that the high school. Third, the cesarean section thing, actually, you cannot generalize the whole thing. Consider that. A cesarean people in our country, sometimes they are very ill-prepared, they are very anemic. That creates a lot of stress, they will have chest pain. Again, after cesarean section, from the placenta, a huge amount of fluid comes into circulation. There's 40% increase, acute increase in the blood volume. That produces some overload on the heart that may produce chest pain some condition as well number three the patient for cesarean section remain long time nothing by mouth that's another thing be practical look at the patient and find out what is the actual cause most of the time it's benign give them some but, sir, they are the spinal anesthesia causes hypertension actually, and causes hypertension I will tell you something. Spinal anesthesia may be a kind of bystander. Because for caesarean, most of the time we do the spinal anesthesia. How can you be sure spinal anesthesia is responsible for that? Why not caesar? You can tell that. And spinal anesthesia is one of the things that leads to uh, redistribution of the fluid in the peripheral vasodilation that occurs. That may be the reason. First, Mohinujam sir's uh, lecture is like a wise man's lecture, not only knowledge, knowledge plus experience. Yeah. So in cesarean section, during or after cesarean section, uh, definitively most of the pain, uh, chest pain that happens is benign, as uh, Udit sir is uh, mentioned. But anyhow, chance of deep vein thrombosis leading to thromboembolism, pulmonary embolism, and amniotic fluid embolism that is to dangerous condition, sometimes may produce chest pain. So that emergency and critical things should never be ignored anyway. Actually, those patients come with shortness of breath much more than chest pain. Yeah, definitely. The patient we have seen, their main presentation is actually shortness of breath. Yes, sir. And they have become hypotensive and everything. Hypotension and chest pain. And chest pain is secondary. Shortness of breath and other things. Hear me? Dr. Arif? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Lots of questions in the box. Please summarize. One important question, question I have noted. Yes, sir. Somebody, right, sir. Uh, somebody is asking whether we should be giving heparin routinely after streptokinase. Monitor, would you say something sir. about it? Heparin? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. After, 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 after streptokinase, uh, the low molecular weight heparin is given uh, because it, 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 it reduces chance of the reinfraction. Yes. But the, after tenecti plays, the chance of bleeding, it is always the balance between the, uh, yes, uh, the hemorrhagic risk and, and, and uh, thrombotic yes. events. Yes. Uh, after thrombolytics, especially with the streptokinase, Patient can be given a low molecular weight heparin. I usually, we routinely give, I think. But but <laughs> with the tenective plays, the low molecular weight heparin may give rise to more bleeding tendency than the streptokinase. But sir, that has to be given. After tenective plays, you have to give uh, 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 an 
And after streptococcus, it's actually guidelines say you have to give pontoparinux, but that's not available. We use but anyhow, uh, sir, uh, for examining like, purpose, uh, uh, we will learn like this. There are three conditions when after streptokinase you may need enoxaparin or uh, low molecular uh, uh, heparin. Uh, first, if it is uh, streptokinase is not effective, that means uh, thrombolysis is not uh, ensured. So ongoing testing is there. Number two, if there is uh, thrombus in the LV, sometimes may happen after extensive anterior MI, and with patient with severe LV dysfunction after MI. These three conditions, uh, we should continue in a separate or low molecular uh, or heparin. Thank you, thank you. I, nice piece. I, for the exam, for the exam, exam can, must be can I add something? Actually, actually, recent guidelines suggest after streptokinase, you add thrombus routinely. Those three were the beforehand, we used to say that. But now it is, it's routinely. And after 10 to place, you have to give uh, uh, an anoxaparin and that very quickly, within 15 minutes. And uh, what is the reason? Because yes, sir. Uh, for the, for the students, uh, there is generalized thrombotic tendency. And for that, addition of fondaparinex has increased the uh, complications. Previously, we used to say uh, LV thrombus, Huge anterior MI, LPT, severe akinetic anterior wall, you have to give. Uh, and fail thrombolysis. Or fail thrombolysis, you have to give heparin. But that was uh, uh, more than 15 years ago. Now, routinely, you should give thrombolytic, uh, uh, low molecular heparin for yeah. every patient. Mr. Yeah. Sir, uh, the frequently asked question in the exam why the fibrin specific thrombolytis, why give the heparin, must give in the heparin? The uh, exam. Uh, Mr. Sir, you're the examiner. Why giving the heparin mandatory for the fibrin specific thrombolytics? It any plays, LT plays, or everything. Um, why, why heparin is being, is being given in every patient with SCS? No, 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 no. After, no. no, no, no. after, after, oh, after oh, oh, you oh, are thrombolytics, we have to give heparin. Why? What what we have seen historically after giving the thrombolysis, there is again re-thrombosis in thirty percent of the cases. 30%, for example, if with streptokinase, we can uh, we can reopen the artery in 60% cases, and then again, reocclusion will reduce it to 42%, because another 30% will develop the reocclusion. But the same story is, is not true for RTPA. RTPA has got almost 80% chances of keeping the keeping the artery patent. And again, it has also the chances of doing the reocclusion. Rethrombosis. Rethrombosis is, is a major factor that has to be prevented with anticoagulant. That is what I know. Um, well, actually, if, if actually, 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 the short, short action period of those thrombolysis and the basic tendency of the raw surface that induces again thrombosis. To prevent that, you have to give uh, heparin. But my point is, nowadays, we have such a good antiplatelets. I am not sure. At present day study, it will show any benefit if we give ticagrelor or uh, with aspirin. Whether we but any, anyhow, any sir, uh, regarding antiplatelet and anti uh, thrombotic, means anticoagulant, both are different uh, mode of action. Even if the patient is loaded with a lot of antiplatelet, including the antiglina, that we have to give heparin. So there is no alternate to heparin. Heparin is, no, no. Heparin is the point is heparin. you have to thrombolyze it. You have already thrombolyzed it. Thereafter, the chances of again platelet aggregation that will be mainly prevented by antiplatelet. That has to, that that's the most important role. And the secondary role is uh, uh, continuation of heparin. We have to remember that after thrombolysis. The point is here now thrombolysis. Are um, many other important questions? Sajal, uh, Arif, do you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there is lots of uh, questions from, from the students student side. Yes. Uh, those are already discussed. Even then, they have asking to uh, re uh, re about few questions, like about uh, syndrome X. Syndrome X. It is the most syndrome. important question in the short, short question. I mean, the like short question. Uh, the syndrome X. Or metabolic syndrome X. Yeah, metabolic syndrome X. Yeah. Syndrome X for ischemic heart disease. Yes. Uh, that is cardiac syndrome X. 
discarding that uh, designation now we are telling microvascular dysfunction so we should get right. ever of this thing microvascular angina and this is a reality and we don't have any answer for that as yet we used to say calcium channel blocker will do uh, will help we know that now it's not we used to say beta blocker will help we know that now it's not what is helpful starting and anti platelet these two things really help particularly starting perhaps by through the endocellular uh, dysfunction improvement i'm not sure i'm i'm curious about the role of nicorandil in, in here Actually, the syndrome X, what happened? Uh, the, after the, the initial part of the angiographic uh, finding, they found that a lot of patients are coming just pain, normal coronary. So they put this patient in a, a file, name X, X file, keep it in X file. So that's why it came as a X syndrome. So basically, they don't find any oblit of occlusive coronary artery disease. From there, it came that there is a possibilities of microvascular uh, thrombus, a microvascular disease, usually associated with hypertension, dysmetabolic syndrome, hypertension syndrome, and obesity. So these are the patients having this symptom more. Uh, uh, we call it so syndrome X. As Wadud uh, uh, says, that actually uh, there is no definite cause uh, uh, we have found. Probably endothelial dysfunction might have some role here. So here the nitrate may not have a good idea uh, to help these people because nitrate already, the endogenous nitrate is enough to dilate the vessel. And if you carefully see <coughs> If the vessel caliber is bigger than the usual people. That indicate the the vessel in the microvascular channel is not blood is not flowing smoothly. There is little sluggish type of flow. So I'm not sure. Probably there is a, the, the the microvascular level. There is some problem in in gaseous exchanges of um, blood leads to this angina. And maybe trimetazine and uh, renalazine have a uh, nicorandal also, and also calcium channel blocker might have some role. But I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have some observation about I will syndrome. You back Syn uh, syndrome. I will be on that point. Syndrome X and metabolic yeah. syndrome X is not the same thing as you have said, yeah. number one. Number two, you, you have mentioned very rightly, sir, nitrate rather causes increase in the symptom. Uh, it is very good observation. Number three, we have a study on patient with syndrome X where there is slow flow. Objectively, we measured the flow, slow flow, and these are the group of patients. Definitely, they show slow flow. Number four, in non-invasive tests, especially in uh, uh, MPI and in like gadolinium uh, MRI, there, there is also defect in, in, in those cases. That is how we actually, it is is also positive. That is how the syndrome makes the diagnosis is objectively. It is just not a subjective thing, objectively being made. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Arif, yeah. Arif, Arif, you so, hear um, me? Can so I it's a uh, diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, so for, it's a diagnosis I, of exclusion. Uh, can I, can I also clarify for the just, students? Yes, syndrome X, cardiac syndrome X, differentiate, patient has typical angina, positive ETT, yes. normal coronary. Yes. That's right. the cardiac syndrome X. Metabolic syndrome X is a different, different. thing. Yeah, sir, the relevant sir, syndrome. Uh, it's why a question should be precise question answer because lots of question. Are you? Right. Yeah. Sir, so there is observed that there are lots of um, sometimes the patient admitted with chest pain and got uh, streptokinase and later diagnosed as a case of pericarditis and tagal subocardiomyopathy. In, in these two situations, how a, a beginner can differentiate this? Is the pericarditis or tagal subocardiomyopathy from ischemic heart disease, sir? Clinical. Takasubu. Takasubu cardiomyopathy is different. That's different. Because they have present you know, typical you know, chest pain. That is MI. Takasubu is MI. MI. Right. So MI. with a normal coronary because of so commonly in the female, maybe so overactive sympathetic system, normal coronary. But subsequently it recovers completely. If you do LV graphy now, immediately after, it, it will recover completely. In fact. 
future. So th this is one issue. Second, as he said, the pericarditis. Yes, accidentally. Not only that. Right. I'll, see, I'll I'll give you one story. The patient was been having chest pain. Came to hospital emergency. They did the ECG. Unfortunately, they thought that this is the acute MI, high lateral. Why unfortunately? Because there is a Q wave in one and a VL. Actually, what happened? The lead was been altered. Uh, inversion. And the patient was diagnosed as acute MI and thrombolysis. So how small thing can make a big mistake? So it is not only the machine, the men behind machine also think about them. So looking at the ECG, unless you read properly, you, there is every possibility of misdiagnosis this patient from pericarditis, infraction. If you carefully see the pericardial pericarditis patient, definitely it is it mimics infarction. But not only solely ECG is enough for diagnosis of MI. MI diagnosis, you have got another two criteria, you'll have to incorporate these things. Along with that, you'll have to add other symptoms, risk stratification. So all together come to confusion. By seeing ECG, you cannot I think that okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, what you said, uh, the can I can they add something about sure, this? Sir. Uh, sir. To differentiate pericarditis from acute MI is actually crucial, and we have to understand that because I have seen patients where they have even done the posterior wall uh, posterior wall ECG because they are thinking this is inferior MI, and even then they have given it. Look at the ECG. The ST elevation will not be limited to a single arterial territory. There will be global change, both LAD, in anything like that happens, look at AVR. You will find out PR elevation, PR segment elevation in AVR. ST depression, PR elevation. That's very crucial. Look at lead to PR segment depression. This is very helpful. And please take uh, the history. Take the very history. Very important here. Usually very important. most of the pericarditis... And about Takushubo, Takushubo actually a, a rectifective diagnosis. Because you can say only Takushubo later on. You cannot see beforehand. So treat it as acute MI. As Mohamedjah... Evolving change in so the ECG is important. ECG actually changes the evolve the number one. And it's a lot of pre-metal angina. I'm going to call it for the same syndrome. I'm going to call it for the same syndrome. I'm going to call it for the Please let us see another thing that that's very uh, oh, this important. Is a, important. A nice question from the student. Uh, how you diagnose the explicit pulmonary embolism and LT dissection in the CCU for the uh, doctor working in the CCU? And the uh, typical points to diagnose the missing pulmonary effusion, embolism, and LT dissection. Sir, missing pulmonary embolism. Sir. लाइंग हार्ट फेलियर और व्हाट एवर इट रीजन सडनली डेवलप सीवियर शॉर्ट ऑफ ब्रेथ एंड हाइपोटेंशन साइनोसिस सो दिस इज मोर इन फेवर ऑफ पल्मोनरी एम्बोलिज्म देन ऑफ एओटिक रिजेक्शन एओटिक डिसेक्शन एओटिक रिजेक्शन पेशेंट अदरवाइज हेल्दी अदरवाइज हेल्दी पेशेंट सडनली से व्हाइल lifting a wet suddenly feeling severe tearing pain if you find there is, you might have difference in pressure on either hand then maybe uh, accompanying with uh, your uh, picture of 
other organ target organ involved with the aortic degeneration there can be possibilities of aneurysm so this is separate the two group of patient is separate so the history you can identify uh, uh, these two things separately yeah thank you sir arif do you hear me arif sir uh, one important yeah. question is sir uh, uh, regarding chest pain evaluation by excess tolerance by ecg Uh, we in our life we have observed uh, few patient uh, uh, during performing ecg develop mi and ultimately uh, when and referring to cisu the patient expired in our practical experience how uh, what are the advices for the young cardiologist to avoid this situation or evaluate uh, the patient for ecg uh, for test this is a clinical question basically uh, in right, my sir. hospital during my last 14 years i got three patient having the same problem he came as a outpatient patient for ecg suddenly having chest pain and we had to do angioplasty right at that moment because of the facility prevail here i could i could manage these things to in my hospital but most of the ecg is been done in a place where this facility is not prevail so here the that's why ecg should be should be done under observation of a cardiologist not by the technician yes technician will do the job first of all the history is a very important if somebody has got ongoing chest pain ongoing chest pain there is no point to advise for ecg if there is a, a existing ecg shows some changes you don't need to go for ecg if the ecg beginning of the ecg there is a st depression you don't need to proceed further you stop it so these are the criteria you can risk the reduction uh for the possibilities of precipitation of myocardial infarction acute coronary syndrome while doing is i remember one thing you know, many of us know professor kamrul huda he developed acute myocardial infarction after it after it so the, because he had chest pain he had chest pain but even say, after two or three days he was advice for ett and he did the ett so i am not so sorry to say the name of the because he is our respected teacher uh, being right. uh, himself is a uh, big physician so i think uh, it should be supervised closely monitored by a cardiologist see the take the history see the ecg and on during during ecg during treadmill you constantly monitor ecg changes and blood pressure if there is any yeah. change stop it Uh, can can you, I add something? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Most of the time, you will find a very interesting. They have not taken the history properly. A patient having class three angina, why should you go for a a a a t t? They must exactly. know. This is for class one, class two, not for class three. You history should not do it. Number two, in a c t, more than one millimeter s t d pressure, you should not go for a t t. There is no use in there. L v h is strain. There will be false positive, even though patient has coronary no no coronary disease. So you should go for some other modality, particularly stress echo, but not ECT, and monitoring. So, limiting the patient to a technician who doesn't have any idea about resuscitation, we should not do that. Ah. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Arif. Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, there's a. Uh... as uh, more jamal sir intervention in cardiologist there is few question related to intervention so one question is that uh, what how you manage non infarct related arteries during this case non infarct related arteries how you take decision okay. non infarct during primary care during primary care but significant lesion but uh, no, no, no. yeah but significant it, it, lesion tell amar subjective bhai re chole jese now uh, i am <laughs> yeah, yeah, the on i yes, no, i think should be considered Yes, uh, few, few of them wanted to hear from you. A few lot words. of discussion on it. This is this dedicated for the students only. Yeah. And I yeah, want yeah. to speak. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, one, uh, uh, one question is related. Uh, sir, one question related to in in the psychotic drugs. Yes. Uh, because so we get lots of patients who have this also uh, along with is getting anti psychotic drugs. So what are the uh, safer drugs? What are, how we can choose the anti psychotic drugs which is safer for treating anti psychotic patients? I think I know what the studies have shown. Studies have shown it is the SSRI. 
that's the most safest of drugs among the uh, antidepressants. Uh, antipsychotic drugs, which particularly the atypical ones, risperidol and others, and the previous one, haloperidol, all these drugs are do not produce ischemia, but they induce a change in the ECG and they uh, produce a long TT. All these are membrane-specific agents, so they can act also on the cardiac myocyte. We have to remember that. And particularly in the context of electrical uh, electrolyte abnormality, these things are multiplied, they amplified. So we should be careful about that. Particularly if the patient is SSR is diabetes. safest drug, basically. Safest. 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 And more inhibitor others actually is a more uh, uh, erythrogenic. Uh, one question is... Uh, 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 like that. And are, I... These are not safe. Okay. Are you... Uh, one question is related to N general score. N general score in N general equivalent. Uh, you have any idea, sir? N general score in N general equivalent question. N general equivalent? Yeah. N general equivalent. N general equivalent. Sir, what is that? N general equivalence in our country is perhaps very important because people think angina as pain. It's not. By definition, angina is a sense of discomfort. So call it angina, do not call it chest pain. That's better. And second is angina equivalence. Many of our patients come with the complaint that they have effort intolerance. They used to walk uh, up to three, third or fourth stairs very quickly. Nowadays, he can do that. He's going to office, missing the office bus, running a little bit, getting in the bus and finding that he cannot take breath and feeling a, 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 a sort of discomfort. Yes, yes, effort, yeah. intolerance, effort intolerance should be given very much importance to uh, in the symptomatic diagnosis of angina, uh, ISD because diastolic dysfunction come much earlier than systolic dysfunction, ECG change, and chest pain. And diastolic dysfunction is manifested as effort intolerance. This earlier stage of ischemic heart disease. And yes, also, that, that also indicates a multivessel disease. Yeah. Or left mandibular left mandibular disease. And the huge area of myocardium is involved. And some elderly patients, diabetic patients, sometimes complain of palpitation. I have seen some patients like yeah. this. That is also related to effort and generalist effort ischemia. They complain like of palpitation himself. and sometimes vertigo because of maybe short run of VT like this. So, this. Uh, like, Fetal life failure, fetal life arrhythmia, that may be the uh, equivalent to equivalent to angina. Yes. Arif, there is another question. Uh, so, there is LVOT obstruction, uh, such as aortic stenosis or HOCM, uh, frequently present with angina uh, like chest pain. So, how to manage this pain or how to manage this angina pain with LVOT obstruction, sir? Yes, sir. This is the last question today. Commonly, actually, yes, anything sir. that reduces the LBG OT gradient, you can use beta blocker right. or uh, uh, diltizem, can reduce the LBOT obstruction uh, gradient. That can help uh, in, in angina of LBOT obstruction. Yes. There are also, there is some role of uh, um, 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 climate disease uh, or renalazine has got some role here. As but anyhow, nitrate is bad here. Yeah, nitrate is already contraindicated. Right. Thank uh, you, sir. I'm, you I'm, get... I'm interested to hear about the role of disopyramide in HCM. Uh, yeah, Mishka, yeah. I do you have any comment? Mishka, sir? Disopyramide. Uh, unmute, please. Unmute. Mishka, sir. Disopyramide, uh, as a matter of fact, used to be used for uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy when they were complaining because of its negative inotropic effect. Yeah. Uh, the less and you have the inotropic LBD. effect, negative inotropic effect, because it, uh, uh, it depresses LB much. So that that uh, function, that this function can should not be extracted for any benefit. Actually, it should not be given. Thank you. At, at one time, for, when we are a student. Thank you, sir. 
ियोलॉजी and he is the second cardiologist of maldives mm. and because uh, before him uh, there is one cardiologist and uh, he graduated from uh, india because maldives students mostly go to india but abdul aziz and uh, dr hanif they are the um, uh, now at present situation they are the most popular cardiologist of maldives and they graduated uh, post graduated from our nicbd and they even, and frequently they joined our programs and very much keen to uh, develop uh, and uh, their skill from bangladesh they expect your cooperation thank you ajis thank you so much thank you there is thank our there is our role also we should we should but i i, I must you. share a experience in my student md third par student one young lady uh, is a 35 years old coming with severe chest pain and shortness of breath but interesting the lady uh, asked i feel uh, comfort if i lying lying down but severe shortness of breath young lady is it chance must change but he feel comfort when lying lying uh, down so that is diagnosis of pulmonary embolism is like platelet platelet near so uh, i just forgot this this lady and third third part in the student i just remember this experience but she feel better when he lying down so is platelet near or the sir you feel this uh, uh, in your experience this patient yes and i have exactly uh, because i have i have tagged this one patient from that flu yeah person is having less dyspnea on lying down he very short to the bed but he is he yes. wants to lie down that's very important so uh, after evening at night with the echocardiography something uh, doing that is uh, something like yeah. proning in the covid because of the redistribution of the blood flow there is some vq improvement and the patient have less uh, dyspnea <laughs> I will. Mr. Sir, I, I think you experience and uh, actually yeah, yeah, endocardial pressure yeah. dec decreases. PCW decreases, right? You are very right. Yeah. PCW decreases due to pulmonary so lying. Thank you, sir. So we have observed few patients with platelet increase bulb up from bulb with mitral stenosis, and uh, we uh, we got yeah. this uh, situation and in our CCU or uh, during eco hours. Platelet from normally, sir. Mr. Sir, platelet from normally sometimes feel uh, better when lying down. I think so. Multiple. Yes, yes. That is also yes. true because. Thank you, sir. Do... Thank you, Monoj. Thank you, Monoj, sir. Uh, uh, giving time more than two hours. This is my, my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Uh, before uh, Abdul Wahid, sir, I just some some announcement from the IPDI. Then go to the Wahid, sir. Thank you, sir. uh we have some announcement cospi evolution and discussion it is the most uh, desirable topics for the examine cospi fear of the evolution. and also not only student we have the faculty don't know how to examine portion uh, of celebrity so there is evolution program on the first october on the student register register uh and discussion program i think um i on 15th october there is a google form just you will click the here you can register your name they started on october on thursday but last class on friday tomorrow it is the inaugural program on the catlay manual series for the fellows i think monoj sir will be present on the tomorrow at 8 pm his presence will be enlightened us in the catlay manual series is continue every thursday from the puncture to uh, muscular peripheral everything will trying and it is uh, our epd announce dr tan hm will be inaugurate the tomorrow's program at 8 pm then will be there uh, he will be give the certificate he can consent receiving the certificate all the fellows and signed by the dr 
and also our course director for this sir so oh, thank you thank you everybody uh, thank you monitor sir and everybody all the panelists being with us for more than 2 hours for this sir please I before what to get audience before what to start uh, just my sir. two words yes sir please continue this program even after covid thank because you sir because this is thank a forum you. this is a forum where the truly the student will get maximum benefit because you know the if a teacher like wadud will will teach only 10 15 student in dhaka medical college At the same time the the, the heart foundation patient, uh, doctors may not get chance to see his lecture so this is the forum at least it will right. complete a lot of students so continue it even after covid thank you exactly. for the encouragement thank you sir uh, Dear audience, I have promised you, you will have a very good, uh, enjoyable session. I think we have fulfilled our promise. And Momichan Bhai has not only described, as somebody was saying, this is not a lecture only made out of knowledge, but also out of wisdom. What is wisdom? When we use our knowledge in practical field to bring out some good result, that results in wisdom. and we have seen the glimpses of wisdom from his lecture from the discussion and also the panelist and also the questions that had been asked all these things has enlightened us collectively not only you are learning but my myself is learning many 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 things and we are lucky in the sense that very rarely after i have become a uh, last 24 years uh, i am a student in cardiology first two or three years as a student thereafter as a teacher but this is the time when as a teacher i am got the chance of learning more i have become a true student myself covid has given us that chance mohan jawan bhai was saying we should take this chance whole heartedly embrace it use it and lighten ourselves make ourselves a better doctor serve this country that's the ultimate goal serve humanity as human being we should be better doctor and better human as well and for that we have to become knowledgeable this is giving us the chance mohan jawan bhai has given us a boost in that effort thank you sir thank you everybody and thank you insepta for being with us for long Five years, four or five months, almost. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you. Incepta. Especially Incepta, they are doing even that job last five and a half months uh, uh, to organize the program, help with technical support, everything. Also, Dr. Munjuan sir, always uh, uh, keep uh, keep pacing us. Do 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 good job. Mashka uh, sir with us always every day in present in time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vadu sir. Uh, sir is looking so majestic today. <laughs> Majestic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Oshukda, thank you so much. Arif, thank you so much. And Wadi sir, all of you guys. See you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. At 8 p.m. I think new era of Catholic Millennial Series. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Salaam alaikum. Good night. Waalaikum salam. Good night. Aziz, thank you, Aziz.